Are you interested in taking the architecture registration exam? Are you looking for tips and guides so you can figure out what it is and how to succeed at it? Well, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Brandon with I Am The Studio. I'm really trying to help you today figure out your direction for taking the exam, hearing my story, and figure out what's the best strategy for you to take this exam and succeed. I started this process of architecture over 20 years ago, and I started my exams in 2020 and went through in 10 months. That was not an easy task. However, there are some things that I learned along the way and that I can share to you in this video that will help you to take the exam and pass. Actually, the exam is pretty simple. It's only six parts, and these six parts are set up to help you in your competence and also to show and prove that you can help the health, safety, and welfare of the public with your architecture. Pretty much that your architecture isn't dangerous. Architects all around the world have gone through these processes to get to the great architecture projects that they're interested in, that you've probably seen and that you love. And you've probably worked on a lot of beautiful architecture projects. And if you work in a firm and you see that there are projects that, what does the principal do? What do the licensed architects do? You know, what is the difference between them and me? Well, when you take the exams, the clarity is so much higher. And also the, the requirements. Before getting started, I want to tell you what sort of things we'll talk about in this video so you can be really have your eyes open to see what's going to happen as we go through it. But also, I want to let you know that exam is not for everybody. And so I'll go through at the end some of the other options that people have if they don't want to take the exams. All right, in this video, there's no exams, no test, but it's talking about a test, hopefully in an engaging way. First, it starts off with the first thing about what the test is. Next, it talks about this exam. And then it will talk about the different parts of the exam. Then we'll talk about how to strategize for each part in a particular way to help you have much more progress so you'll get to the end without having so much stress because you didn't know what you did. And then I'll talk about passing, dealing with failing, and also some of the little hacks that will help you get through to the end of the day. And at the end of the video, I'll give you some great resources and also some tips if you choose not to go through licensure process, which is also a valid option. All right, let's get started. The architecture registration exam. What is it? I didn't know what it was till late into my career after going through grad school and several things, and I had to really spend time to learn about it myself. And I appreciate it so much more because I said, hey, architects, not just are licensed, they can do bigger buildings, but they actually get to provide a lot more value to the world they go with architecture and design. Okay, here are the parts of the exam. I've heard it divided in this way, and I think it will be really valuable for you as you look into the exams. There's concept, and then there's technique. And technical exams are typically harder, unless you're a technical-minded guy, and also the concept exams are also harder if you're more about technique. So there's easy, if you like technical, great. There's easy for concept if you like conceptual. So here are the conceptual exams. Practice management, project management, and then programming and analysis. Those three exams go through the AIA, contracts, concepts about running a firm, concepts about putting projects together, how projects are organized, how companies are organized, and then it gets into these elements that you'll have to pretty much memorize a lot of terms, but also do a little bit of calculation. But it stays on the light side, on the concept side of architecture. The next three exams, this is all according to NCARB's order. NCARB administers the ARE. Those exams are project planning and design. They are project development and documentation. And then also the last one, construction evaluation. These are looking at the end part of a project, pretty much. You're looking at how you're going from schematic design to design development, design development to construction documents, and then you're getting your project bid, and then you're getting it built. 
So these are some elements that you will be going through, and the idea is you're going to get through these only by having a lot of understanding about the architecture, about codes, and about a lot of the contract law to get your project built right. Okay, so let's break down those six exams. We start with the practice management exam. Practice management is knowing how a company is organized, knowing how to think about the budget, are you earning money, are you losing money, how to look at numbers in general, and also the AIA contracts. Understanding all these concepts together and being able to do the calculations involved will require some practice. But if you get those concepts, you get some practice, I think you'll be ready to get through the exams. Take lots of practice exams. And if this is your first exam, you definitely want to go in with good study cards, with good of that information under your belly. The project management exam is next. That's where you're looking at how projects are delivered. You're going to be thinking about, is it delivered um, as a design build, design bid build? Is it delivered uh, with the construction management? You will look at all these different ideas as you study and figure out how those apply to the project. You'll also be thinking of some of the similar terms from the pretty much the AIA contract documents and how the companies that you looked at are going to fulfill the project. You'll be looking at also how to staff the project and how to figure out those sort of calculations that will help the project foundation be built. The last conceptual exam is going to be your programming and analysis. So this starts to get fun because it starts to say, where does the building go on site? How does sun affect your building? And how do you deal with organizing a project and how it is? You know, the idea is you'll put different spaces together, and that's part of the exam and how you'll put that there. Those concepts will help you figure out what is needed to take those exams. So concept exams are easy for some, hard for others, but the idea is now you have a little bit of an underbelly about what to expect. And your resources, you want to definitely be absorbing as much as possible about those concepts in this phase. The next phase for your technical exam is where things really start to get fun because you're really going to have to push yourself because there's a lot of things that you would not learn in school, things about how materials work, things about calculations, and it's something that you can learn to love, but it will take time. The first exam that starts with this technical focus is your project planning and design. Project planning and design is great part of architecture, but it's also hard. You're thinking about the different materials, you're taking, thinking about stone, steel, other types of metal, masonry, you're thinking about plastics, how things interact, and you're also going to be thinking about those different trades that put your project together. Mechanical and electrical, thinking about plumbing, and also different things like acoustical engineering. These are sometimes thought of as the engineer's realm, but architects have to lead the process of architecture. So being tested on these is something that will make a difference for your practice as you go forward. So project planning and design is really setting you up for this process of leading the design team and knowing how to serve your client, the owner, and their, cons their team pretty much effectively. The next exam is project development and documentation. So this exam is definitely hard, and some people say it's the hardest, because it's going past that schematic design and between your design development and your construction documents. In fact, on this exam, you'll be asked to examine several details and saying, okay, what's right, what's wrong with this detail? You'll also be looking at structures. You'll be doing structural calculations, knowing the difference between a point load and a concentrated load. And if that sounds like Chinese to you or going back in the days of school, understand you'll need to know a lot more than you do in school. So part of this exam, I think the study practice, study strategy is getting lots of practice exams, getting familiar with different things like the international um, building code and also pretty much going through some of the professional parts of the project. You will need to be learning and asking questions all the time, and I think that's a great way to start getting a foundation in your knowledge for exams like this. The final exam in the technical series is the construction and evaluation. This starts dealing with learning how these documents of the architecture contract will deal with different 
different versions of, of the AIA contract documents, how you're going to deal with bidding the project, seeing which contractor will get it at a good price, and also looking at different things like bonds and also what happens if a project isn't built on time. You know, what are the liabilities? So this actually is often paired with the construction evaluation exam is paired with project management and practice management because they talk a lot about those AIA contracts. The one between the owner and architect, the one between the architect and his consultants, the one between the contractor and the owner. These are going to be some key things that why some people take those three together. The technical exams are in their own a thing that you're going to be learning, but the conceptual exams, if you don't have those concepts, you're going to be spending a lot of time learning. Okay, so those are the six exams. So that's where you're going to be targeting. However, you do need to be thinking about how you're going to get to that point. Here's the exam day. You're going to go to the exam center. You're going to be prepared by your studies and you'll be rested in your mind and you'll be going into a center where you'll pretty much be without any pieces of paper sitting in front of a computer taking exams. Now, if you've decided to do the online proctoring, it'll be a similar way where you'll be sitting in front of your computer and pretty much nothing on your areas as you start this exam. So when you get started, you're going to be going and reading the contract between you and NCARB and then going question by question through the exam. Each of the exams is divided into two areas. The one is the multiple choice. And then there are the case studies. And when I say multiple choice, I also mean some click and point questions. There's also some numerical questions where you have to calculate. And there's also, of course, some questions where it's all that apply. So get ready, be thinking about these questions and your strategy for dealing with the various ones. So the, I say the multiple choice part, um, but then what about the case study part? Well, the case study gives you a lot of documents that relate to a particular project, and you have to answer questions about that project bit by bit. So you will have to spend some time reading. So how do you deal with these two sections that are going to be part of each exam? I recommend that you definitely budget out one to two minutes for your multiple choice, that first part of your exam, and then you want to multiply that for your case studies because case studies will take longer. The way the NCARB exam is organized now for 5.0 is that you take the exam questions and you, if you take a break, you cannot go back and change your answers. They're locked. So you'll be really needing to answer a set of questions and then review them before your break. One thing I did is as I was going to my multiple choice, I took a look at the case studies, one, one or two of the questions, and then I reviewed those as I answered them to my, to my knowledge, and then I reviewed the multiple choice, and then I took my break. And when I came back, I already had a base understanding for the case study to finish it. This is an important part of your process. That is mindset. You have to calm yourself during the exam. You have to take little breaks. Don't be flustered. Some exams or questions are crazy, and you need to understand it's okay. Some people will understand by learning that you need to take your exam and focus on some of the questions you like and get those through, and then go back to some of the hard questions. If a question is taking a very long time, you might want to just take a little bit of a break and keep going through the other questions. Don't get stuck on a question. You're getting graded for the entire exam, not just for one question. So here's what happened after you finish and you pass an exam. You can see from that day when you take the exam, at the end there's an option, or you can find out later on because NCARB sends a pass information and puts it in the portal where you take and register for your exams. That is something that is really rewarding if you pass, of course, but you need to keep focused. Don't get cocky, pretty much. If you take an exam and you pass, you will have to take other ones and you might have to use a different strategy. So passing the exams is great and it's something you should celebrate. 
If you fail an exam, it's going to be a little heartbreaking, but the idea is you take a lot of exams, take a lot of practice exams, and you go through some of these things to understand that this exam itself might be a practice exam for a future taking, and you might need more than one. You need to learn every time from your exams. So if you fail an exam, NCARB does give you a record about it. So it says what areas you need the most work in. The tests are hard, so don't beat yourself up. I had an issue with online proctoring. It just didn't work for me. I had to take an exam again, but that was fine because I learned something from the process. And so I think that will be the same for you. If you've already taken an exam or if you, you need to get a mindset for going forward, understand, and some people say that failing is part of the process. That's why I say take as many practice exams, take, take as many you know, notes, go through it, ask questions, make sure that you think of it as a beginner. That'll help you get to the next one and get to that pass. So what happens after you finish all of your exams? Well, each state has its own licensing requirements. Of course, there's also, for every state, pretty much a two to four year process of taking exams, um, besides taking exams, where you're working for an architect in your internship. The IDP was the previous name, Intern Development Program. That's now the Architecture Experience Program. So you're gonna get the practice experience to go along with your exam competence experience. And then every state has its own particular nuance of references or some extra exams. But the fact that the ARE is so comprehensive, it does rank among the hardest parts of your going forward and becoming an architect. And when you finish and you get through all that, you are now held to a standard of care to be an architect who will exercise competence and give your best quality for each project. Being licensed is not about knowing everything. Also, being licensed doesn't mean you're doing interesting work. It's just a part of your process to help you, even if you're really great at design, to start putting an element of complexity to your work that will lead the process better, that will help you lead clients better, help you work with teams better, and achieve more. I hope that those who are licensed to hold that up as a goal and also that they will appreciate design. I know some designers that are not licensed. I know some people that probably will never get licensed and they're really great and they find their own niche. But if you have the opportunity to get licensed and learn your trade to another level, I would recommend it. It doesn't cost a lot in terms of getting started, but the price I've had to pay uh, for finishing my exam at 10 months was pretty high and it's not for everybody. You could set aside a budget and say you'll take an exam every few months. If you're gonna give yourself um, a year, if you're gonna give yourself three years, just make sure you have an uh, agenda and going for it because if you deal with the past or if you have other things going on, it might stress you out to really continue again because starting and stopping has been an issue that I've heard about and I recommend if you set out a certain time frame it will deal with some of the stresses of life that generally can get in the way. Are you ready to get licensed by taking your ARES? Are you ready to take the exams and pass them all? Well if you are then I am on your side. I hope you do the best possible. If you have questions along your journey, feel free to ask me. Check in the link in the description below because you'll find great resources and there are some great people who've made content to help you along the way. And I hope this video has helped you as you're figuring out what you wanna do with your architecture career and with licensure. So have a great day. Thanks for watching.